All right, now we have the subsequent measurement of the lease liability. Initially, the lease liability is measured at the present value of the lease payments. Now we need to uh, see the subsequent measurement of it. So remember that when it's a lease liability, there will be an interest involved in these calculation, which we have already studied based on the implicit rate. So the finance cost will increase the lease liability, debit finance cost, credit lease liability. And when you are making the payments, the lease liability will be reduced. So now you can see the formula. First of all, you have the payment in arrears. That means you're making the payments at the end of the year. So you're gonna take the opening balance opening balance, which is the present value of lease payments. The liability balance will be increased by the interest. So what you're gonna do is you apply the interest on implicit rate. That means you apply the interest rate on the opening balance and then fix lease payments. You're gonna deduct because it will reduce the lease liability and then you get the closing balance. This closing balance will be the opening balance of next year. Remember one thing that if you are doing the calculation, let's assume for 2020, you need to calculate an additional, additional payment for 2021 as well. An extra year, always an extra year. in order to split the liability between current and non-current. We know from the IS fund concept that the liability which you owe within 12 months is your current liability. Outside that, <coughs> sorry, is your non-current liability. So because you're making the lease payments annually, we have, you owe the liability towards the lesser. So the liability which is due within 12 months is the current liability and outside that is the non-current liability. So you're gonna do an extra year calculation. So remember in the payment in arrears, the next year closing balance represents the non-current liability and the difference of both closing balance is the current liability. So just you need to remember this working and this is the working in arrears. Then you have the payment in advance. Now to understand this concept, you can take a plain example. Let's say I have taken 5 million loan from the bank and I immediately pay 1 million back. So at what amount the bank should apply the interest? They should apply on the 4 million because I took the 5 million loan and 1 million is paid immediately. So when you have the payment in advance, then first of all, you're gonna take the opening balance, which is the present value of the lease payments and deduct the payment from it directly because the interest should not apply when you're paying in advance. Then you get the subtotal, then you apply the interest on the subtotal. It will increase the liability, then you get the closing balance. <coughs> all right. Then this closing balance becomes the opening balance of the next year. And then again, the payment less, you get the close, you get the subtotal again, and then apply interest on it. And then you get the closing balance, but here it is going to be different. So the next year subtotal is going to be your non-current liability. And the difference is difference between these two will represent your current liability. So this is you, this is what you need to remember and let's do a calculation, then you will easily get it. Z entered into a five-year lease agreement on 1st November 2ZX2, paying 10975 per annum, commencing on 20, 31st October 2ZX3. So this is what you need to see whenever you have the lease question. So the lease agreement started on 1st November and the payment, first payment which is being made was on 31st October. So, so that represents the payment is being made by the end of the year. And this is in arrears. The present value of the lease payments. So we, we got the opening balance directly. 
was 45,000. And the interest rate implicit, now we got that in this question is 7%. So we take the opening balance and I have already told you, so you apply the interest percentage of the opening balance, it will increase your liability and then you deduct the fixed payments. You get the closing balance. Next year it becomes the opening balance. Then again, apply the interest on the opening balance minus the fixed lease payments. And then you get the closing balance. So the second year closing balance represents your non current liability. The difference between these two is your current liability, which is 8373. And this is the finance cost, which will be recorded in the profit or loss. This is the simplest working. Then you have the lease payment in advance. And again, it is going to be different from the areas. First of all, you need to deduct the payment and then the interest will be applied. <coughs> so on 1st January 20X3, Rabbit acquires a new machine with an estimated useful life of six years under the following agreement. 1st January, the initial payment of 13,760 will be payable immediately, uh, will be payable immediately. Five further annual payments of 20,000 will be due. So they are making an initial payment and then five further payments of 20,000 each. Now this is the fixed lease payment, not the 13,760 because that is the initial payment. Commencing on 1st January 260, so you see the same day they will be making the payments. This is lease payment in advance. Interest, imp interest rate implicit is 8%, which is used for uh, the interest. And the present value of the minimum, of the present value of the lease payment, excluding the initial payment is 86,240, because we are not taking that initial payment. It's not a liability because you have already paid that. So 86,240 and then you apply, you first of all, you deduct the payment from it because it's in advance. Then you get the subtotal, then apply the interest on the subtotal and then you get the closing balance. Because they're asking us for 2004. So we are making the financials for 2004, but we need to put an extra working for 2005. So this becomes the opening balance. Then again, deduct the payment. Then you get the subtotal, apply the interest over it. This is the finance cost. Then you get the closing balance. Again, this becomes the opening balance. Deduct the payment. And then the subtotal is your non current liability. And the difference between these two is your current liability, which is 20,000. So this is how you are going to calculate the lease payment in arrears and lease payment in advance. All right, now we have the right of use subsequent measurement, just like we have discussed the initial measurement of lease liability, then subsequent measurement of lease liability. Now we have the subsequent measurement of the right of use because you have recorded that thing in your non-current assets. So how are you going to deal with it in the subsequent years? Initially, you have recorded it at the present value of lease payments plus initial direct cost plus dismantling plus any down payment. What is the subsequent treatment of that? So just like PPE, the right of use is measured using the cost model usually. This means that it is measured at its initial cost less depreciation and impairment. And we already know both of these concepts from IS 16 and 36. But regarding the depreciation, how many years are we gonna take for it? Because in previous examples, we have seen that the lease term and the useful life or the economic life is usually different. So what are we gonna take? If ownership of the asset, very important point, make sure you are attentive. If the ownership <clears throat> of the asset transfers to the lessee, at the end of the lease term, then depreciation should be charged over the assets remaining useful economic life. And obviously it makes sense, complete logical thing that if the, if the lease term is five years and the life is eight years, 
but by the end of the five years, the asset will be transferred to the lessee. Then we're going to take eight years. We're going to depreciate the asset over the eight years because the, the asset will be transferred to the lessee. Otherwise, the depreciation is charged lower of whatever is lower between the useful life or the lease term, whatever is the lower. So make sure that you remember this concept. <clears throat> now we have the separating components, another new thing that you may be uh, hearing for the first time. A contract may contain a lease component and a non-lease component. Unless an entity chooses otherwise, the consideration in the contract should be allocated to each component based on the standalone selling price of each component. We'll be doing an example on this. Entities can, if they prefer, choose to account for the lease and loan lease component as a single lease. The decision is must be made for each class of right of use asset. However, this choice would increase the lease liability recorded at the inception of the lease, which may negatively impact perception of the entity's financial position. Now we have an example. So separating components means a lease and a loan lease component. <coughs> Sorry. On 1st January, 20X1, Swish entered into a contract, <coughs> sorry, to lease a crane for three years. The lesser agrees to maintain the crane during the three year period. The total contract cost is 180,000. Swish must pay 60,000 each year with the payments commencing on 31st December, that means the areas. Swish accounts for non-lease components separately from leases. So the total contract is 180,000 every year, they have to make 60,000 payment. And they're, they're taking the crane on a lease. In addition to that, they are taking the, the service service thing from the company as well. If contracted separately, it has been determined that the standalone price for the lease of the crane is 160,000 and a standalone price for the maintenance service is 40,000. So if you add these two, 160,000 plus 40,000, that means it is 200,000. And now they are getting a discount over the, the complete contract and the, the amount is 180,000. So here the lease component is the crane and a law, the non-lease component is the service arrangement, maintenance services. Swish can borrow at a rate of 5%, so this is the incremental borrowing rate. Explain how the above will be accounted by Swish. So, first of all, what we need to do is to separate the lease and the non-lease component. And to separate the lease and non-lease component, we're going to take the standalone prices. So, you see that uh, the the total price was 200, right? If they are taking it separately, but now they have got 180 as a fixed price contract a discount. So what we can do is we can apply the discount to both of these components. So 160 divide by 200 and then multiply it by 60,000. And similarly, 40 divide by 200, multiply by 60,000. So 48,000 is the discounted price for the lease component. And 12,000 is the discounted price for service component, which is the maintenance. Now, once we have set